Hi, it's Paul from QTech here. I'd like to take you through the feature set you would expect from a, an advanced multifunction tester. And in our case, it's the KT66DL, which also has some special unique features that I will show you. First thing to appreciate the QTech philosophy is for the best and easiest to use user interface, we have a single rotary dial, four soft keys and a dot matrix screen. The dot matrix screen enables you to have multiple pieces of information for each specific test. It saves scrolling and gives you better feedback. The dial itself is arranged such that uh, it's in the order of the tests that you do, starting off with continuity, then insulation, etc. So in continuity, we have the four soft keys giving you your null, your buzzer off and off, off and on. Over here, we've got a selection of a 200 milliamp or a 15 milliamp uh, test current. 15 milliamp you may, may use for testing uh, electrical motors. In the norm, it will be set at 200 milliamp. The PAP function here, the PAP function is designed for electricians, electrical contractors who don't particularly want to do PAP testing, but inevitably get drawn into it to keep specific customers happy. A typical scenario would maybe a landlord uh, you do their condition reports and they've also got some uh, portable appliances that need testing. This function works in conjunction with our PAT adapter. Here you simply plug your appliance in the front and your test leads in the top here and the connection diagrams are as these illustrations, class one insulation, class two insulation and for earth testing for class one appliances. I'll just demonstrate that because this also gives you a, a download which you can use as your certification. So I'm going to put PAT on and we have three levels of uh, limits in line with the latest code of practice. I'm going to set it to point one which is the common one. I'm going to do a test. It's going to fail because there's nothing connected. Then I'm going to press memory. Now in memory we have some flags that we can change. Uh, it automatically gives you an appliance ID. You can change it should you want. It enables you to put a site in the scenario that it's a house in a street. You could put this, the house number, um, should that suit you. And also we have a place here for appliance code. So again, if it suited you, you could have all your kettles as 01, all your fans as 02, all your computers as 03. But in the scenario that we've got six, 10 or 20 appliances we're testing at one site, we're not going to lose them. The uh, appliance ID is going to locate them. So uh, we have the option should you need them. So moving on to insulation. Now here we can see the benefit of the dot matrix screen. It gives you a digital bar graph of how the um, insulation is testing. Test results comes here and you also have the opportunity to do dielectric and your polarization index. We have a range from 100, 250, 500 and 1000. For PAT testing, again, you've only got 250 and 500 in line with the, the standard. On F1, we've also given you the option uh, to do your surge protection device, checking that it's um, dumps the voltage to earth at the specified level. Here it does a thousand amp uh, ramp test up to a thousand amp, steadily increasing when the voltage breaks down, it will display the DC voltage and the AC voltage. The AC voltage is the one of course that is uh, the specification of the device you're testing. Next we have loop impedance and uh, if any test defines the quality of a multifunction tester, it is the loop impedance function. Here we strip out the high current from the low current, the ATT, anti-trip technology. In high current, first thing to notice is we have the standard 0.01 resolution loop. This is a six amp test. It's six amps because uh, should you be doing say a ZS without a uh, RCD in the circuit, anything higher than six amp 
you're in danger of pulling out a six amp MCB. So generally speaking, high current loop is set at six amps. We have on this tester a 0 0.001 resolution. The exciting thing about this, it's got a 25 amp test current and that enables us to uh, give a genuine 50 kA range on the prospective short circuit current on PFC ranges. At that level of um, resolution, we need to uh, tell the instrument which test leads we're using. There's a couple of digits difference in their resistance and to get that resolution, uh, we need to uh, simply tell the instrument whether it's mains lead or distribution board lead. And uh, just to reiterate, the 0 0.01 resolution, if you're doing your um, prospective short circuit current, 0 0.01, if that's the reading, it will give you a 23A uh, KA um, value. If it was to be one digit higher, 0 0.02, that would halve the um, value, so you get 10 KA. So you really need the 0 0.001 resolution test to give you accurate PSCs when you are close to the transformer. Over at F4 we have a limit function. Now press that and enter. You'll see there is every overcome protection device you'll come across in the UK and uh, you simply select the current rating, the disconnection time and you have um, a factor, the 0.8 rule of thumb factor you can put in, or you can leave it at uh, uh, without the factor. In this case, the limit is 5.82. There it is sitting up there. The next function on the dial is an ATT low current. First of all, we have a standard three wire test. Low current anti-trip loop tests are generally three wire. This is the best option to overcome electronic noise. What we all do, we do a high current, again, generally six amp live neutral, and then a low current neutral earth test. The low current has to be below 50 milliamp uh, because we're testing through 30 milliamp RCDs. And it has to be even lower than 50 milliamps in case there's some standing leakage. And typically ours is 11 milliamps. So this is an, it's a good, robust, low current circuit. Uh, and it has uh, every chance of overcoming electronic noise. The other problems we have with loop testing is RCD uplift, uh, a situation where the uh, test current interferes with sensing of the RCD and it ends up giving an uplift on the loop loop. We've exhaustively tested the KD66 and it's very robust with that regard. The third problem is contact resistance. Um, and you'll find it particularly with old switch gear. If you do a loop test and the value is a bit high, you'll obviously do it again just to check and it's a few digits lower. And then you do it again to check which one's right. And that quite often is a little bit lower again and you can do it several times and maybe five, six, seven, eight times, you eventually get a consistency of result. That, that is the um, effect of each test slightly overcoming the contact resistance. And that contact resistance starts right from, let's say using the mains lead, the pins on the plug in the socket, uh, especially if the socket isn't used that much. The way we can overcome contact resistance also with this pulse function pulse on will pulse the test current first before it takes the reading and uh, that gives you every chance to overcome that before um, you have the effect on your results now during the development of th this tester uh, and the advent of charging points evses electric vehicle supply equipment um, being used and uh, is being taken up very rapidly now. We noticed that uh, some chargers were very sensitive uh, to the three wire test current and would trip 
So we have a three-wire EV uh, test, we call it, and this reduces the current further and e elongates the time it takes to do the test, and we end up at the same pl place in re regards to the good, the secure result. We've also gone one step further and even a lower test current, just in case future charging points are even more sensitive. Now we've added a two wire. Previously, we have not been happy with this because of its uh, sort of uh, random nature. But uh, just latterly, we've managed to improve the um, algorithms and it is now fairly robust test, uh, even when there's a level of electric electronic noise in the circuit and its true value is on lighting circuits where for instance you would normally have to go to the end of a, a string of uh, lights uh, in the ceiling find find the end uh, get up into the ceiling and with a three wire test do a test at height um, now with this you can do that test at uh, the plate switch remove the plate switch, find your uh, switch live and earth and do this low current test. And obviously with, with uh, lighting circuits they have a lower current and in this case again it's a type B 6 amp and the max ZS is 5.82 which gives us a, a, a lot of room uh, for the tolerances to play out. I've had one gentleman come onto the stand at uh, ELEC show, uh, very pleased with this instrument, and he said that he uses that as his default setting. He's so happy with it. The next function we have is our RCD function. Now the 18th edition caught us all out a little bit um, with the sudden sort of rejection of uh, type AC RCDs and the default position that we should always be putting type A's. Uh, based on good reasoning, I may add. But the type ACs are going to be around for a long time yet, as there's thousands and thousands installed. First thing to notice uh, the range here we have a, a variable uh, RCD option 10 milliamps, 30 milliamps, 100 milliamps, 300, 500, and 1000 for type AC. Also, the variable, the variable we can set to whatever we want in the case of a type AC. From 10 milliamps to a thousand milliamps, one amp. So, running down the list of, uh, I'm just going to say it's to 100, running down a list of um, RCD types it covers. There's type AC, ACS, A, AS, B, BS, type F, and type EV. Now, we're probably all aware that. Uh, Electric vehicle charging points come can come with either a type B RCD or a type A with a six milliamp RDCDD device. This test of the KT66 enables you to test those individually for uh, timing, for tripping level, uh, or as part of an auto test. What I'm going to do, I'm going to set it in. To auto, and I've got one hooked up here, so I'm just going to um, connect up here. And finally, this one, make sure this is on. In this case, I've got an RFID unit, so I've got to make sure you hear the contacts come in. The polarity uh, indicators show we've got uh, power. And I'm going to simply press the test button and we'll do the six milliamp tripping time. It's, we see there it's 368.8. I use the card in this case to reset. It takes a few moments. You hear it clicking. There you go. So I'll do the second test. Now to do two half times. Whoops, oh, sorry, I must just reset this. You'll hear it clicking again. 
wait a few moments. That's on the first half of the sine wave. That's on the second half. Now we've got the first <coughs> trip of the RCD. I'm going to abort it there because it uh, is a little bit fiddly to reset the RCD each time. Um, but what I want to demonstrate now is the memory function here. So I'm going to press memory and uh, it enables us to save that and give it um, some flags at which circuit it was on, which board and which site. I'm going to uh, hold down the memory button now and we've got our history. I'm going to come back to one I've done previously. Here we go. And it's the same uh, EVSE. And we can see the full results there and also these flags we can give it. So on to the volts function. Here we have um, on the same screen, live earth, live neutral and neutral earth. Neutral earth, particularly interesting. It can, we can foresee that we like to have any problems. Phase rotation, we get phase-to-phase uh, -phase voltage, L1 to L2, L2 to L3, L3 to L1, plus the uh, sequence of the phases. And last but not least, we get uh, an earth electrode a resistance test. The, uh, the test, of, the three ways to start a test. One is a single press of the test button. One is a press and lock down, that's continuous testing. And then we have uh, a switch probe, which is a really uh, tidy and neat device. Four millimeter tip at the top for GS38. And we have a right angle connector now going into the instrument. Our test leads are really popular. We call them the G7 test leads. We put a lot of energy into uh, ensuring the integrity of the strain relief, doing pull out tests, doing bending tests. And these test, these test leads work in cold and warm conditions and are as robust as they get. We also have, um, obviously, the socket breakout function. Um, we can get our test leads into a socket outlet. But what is not so commonly known is that we have a version of that with a flying lead. Now here you can put any connector you like. Typically it could be a little plug for a, a click um, type sealing accessory and it enables you to get into um, the circuits to test with your four millimeter test leads very quickly. We've also got that in a three phase version. So whatever industrial socket you want to, uh, sorry, industrial plug you want to put on there, you can to suit what you want to test. And uh, last but not least, we have our light mates that uh, enable you to get into um, uh, a light fitting, be it uh, Edison screw, uh, SE, SES, uh, BCS and GU10. So that, in a nutshell, is our KT66DL multifunction tester.